Hello and welcome back. It's Puzzle Time with Sudoku Sleuth, and today we're going to be playing Diagonal Dots. Now, trying to come up with some kind of interesting thumbnail for such a title is a bit of a challenge. So, what we have here is essentially Sleuth sitting what probably looks like his living room there, and maybe a kitchen in the background, and um, got a VR headset on, and you can see on the front of this LCD screen a whole bunch of dots. I guess some of them must be in diagonal, given it looks very much like a matrix to me. Um, it's a probably, you know, a fantastic puzzle for a Tuesday. As you know, I try sometimes, I'm extremely inconsistent about it, and I should be more consistent, to feature much more approachable and introductory puzzles on Tuesdays which I think is very much what we have in store for today. Um, rather me tell you about it, how about we look at today's puzzle and rule sets. So, Diagonal Dots by Chris Nefshade. And we've got the following set of rules. This is a six by six grid, so we need to place the digits one to six in every row, in every column, and in every two by three box. Clearly can't put six you know, the digits 1 to 6 in something that is other than 2 by 3. Then we have diagonal Kropke dots. So every pair of digits diagonally connected by a black dot must be in a 2 to 1 ratio. So that's a, well, that's a bad example. If that's a 2, for example, this would have to be 1 or 4 to make sure is it a 2 to 1 ratio. But that's not just the case. These two cells will also need to be in a 2 to 1 ratio. It's not just this cell. Now, every pair of digits diagonally connected by a white dot must be consecutive. So if we continue with our example here, that is a 2. This would have to be 1 or 3 to be consecutive, but also these two cells would have to be consecutive too. So, relatively straightforward rules. I think, with a bit of thinking, we'll be able to solve this fairly quickly. So, if you want to join Sleuth in uh, his VR universe and uh, give diagonal dots a go, Link will be in the description down below as usual for you to play along. And with that said, I'm going to restart the clock, see how I get on. So I think the trick is the black Kropke dots. They are very restrictive normally. And then one of them is essentially going to be... So let me just think about the options. So we have 1, 2, and 4 is one set. And then the other set is 3, 6. Now, I think that 3, 6 has to be part of it. And then the other one is 1, 2, or 4, which would always include a 2. And then that would leave outside of this setup a 5 and 1 of 1 or 4. That's kind of the gist of it. So if we think about what's going on in these black Kropke dots, in fact, this is probably the better one to start with because it's got a lot of pressure with all of these white Kropke dots. So we can see that the four is at the bottom. just because of this 4. We know that the 3 and 6 are in here. They're not in there. So these are from 1, 4, and 5. That is not a 4. That can't be a 1, because that would require, um, with these diagonals, 2 and 2. There is no other cell available that is consecutive to the 1. So that has to be a 5, and therefore one of them is 4, and one of them is 6. We'll figure out which one it is for us in a second. And if that's a four, that would be three, that would be six, if this is four. And then the five breaks, because the six and the four are not available. So this has to be a one, which can only be joined with a two. The two has to be next to a four, and the 5 can only be consecutive with a 6 now that the 4 is not available. So that's the 6, that's the 3. Right. 
Um, the 2 in here has to be consecutive. It's not a 1. It's a 3. That 5 is not a 6. It's a 4. Um, and we're off and racing, I guess. There's a 4 in here, which is helpful because... No, it's not helpful. There's nothing wrong with me putting a 4 in there. I was thinking it forces the 4, which forces the 2. And we essentially know that this is another 1, 5, but we don't. This can still be 1, 4, or 5 with a definite 5. So the 4 and the 5 are almost certainly the consecutive digits. If this is a 4, well, 3 and 5 can't be consecutive. They're not available. So that's not 4. That's a 1, 5. The 5, well, the 1 requires a 2, so that would be 2 or 4. That's a 6. That gives me, again, 4 in here, 2 in here, 3 and 6 in some order. 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, the 1s obviously have to be joined with a 2, which is not available because of the 2, 4, so no 1s. That's a 5, that's a 2, that's a 1. That 2 has to be joined with 1 or 3. It's definitely possible. These 2, well, the 6 now has to be joined, sorry, the 5 has to be joined with a 6, because 4 is not available. And therefore that gives me the remaining digits, which is a 5. It gives me a 1, gives me a 5. The 1 across it would be a 2, this would be a 4. No 4s here. No sixes here. And if there are no sixes here, there are no threes here. That's the six, that's the three, that's the two, that's the four, that's a one, that's a three. Right. I imagine Sudoku to bring it home, surely. Rather than that, but I mean, we've still got these digits, we may as well use it, these diagonals. So that has to be a five, that has to be a four. Um. We need 1, which can only be in here, 3. That 3 needs to be next to a 2 because the 4 is not available. That's a 6. And we can just finish this up. 2, 3, and if I've not made any mistakes, 5 for the finish. Lovely puzzle. Uh, it only took a few minutes. I guess, you know, it is clearly intended to be highly approachable and it still required a bit of thinking to, th to understand which one of these is it a 2, 4 or a 2, 1? And um, hopefully you guys found it equally approachable. Let me know in the comments as usual. Um, other than that, hope that you enjoyed the puzzle and the video. And I'll see you back for the next one. Bye-bye for now.